And welcome back to the Morning Blend with our continuing series, Money Sense with Ellen Becker Investment Group. Well, we told you before the break that we were going to talk about weight loss, so how does that relate to good money sense? That's a great question. Kieran Ellenbecker is here along with Cassie Kramer to make that connection for us. Kieran is the founder and senior wealth advisor for EIG, and Cassie Kramer lost 176 pounds on the Extreme Weight Loss Show. That is unbelievable. And Tiff remembers the episode. I said, as soon as you sat down, I was like, wait a second, do you have a son? <laughs> and then we started talking. I watched your episode. I think tons of people watching the show watched your episode. Uh, tears. I mean, like, mm -hmm. you cannot watch that show without bawling. But I think there was something about your story in particular that was just so touching. And you and your son and this whole, I mean, it was just phenomenal. And you said yes. it was, Karen, the number one show of theirs. Yes, that number one. That watched. episode. That's and incredible. Enjoyed. Yeah. What's it like to lose 176 pounds? Awesome. <laughs> it just, it's, my, I live my life with no restrictions anymore. Yeah. And it's, it's phenomenal. It was, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life, but it was the most worthwhile. That is, it's like you lost a whole person. More than, yeah, yeah, more than a person. more than a, yeah. a yes. person. Um, you know, a lot of people will debate the, the issue. Is it harder to lose weight or keep mm. it off? And what's your opinion on that? Um, you have to find a good balance to keep it off, but um, sticking with it to lose the weight is the hardest. I think maintenance is actually a little bit easier because you have more freedom. Mm -hmm. You get to eat more food. I, everyone always asks me, what's the difference between pre-finale and post-finale? It's a little more food, a little less exercise, and a few cocktails. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, and so you do. You just have a lot more freedom when you're, when you're in maintenance, when you're in that lifestyle change. You're just, you have to be laser-focused on yeah. it now you get to have it because you can have good days and you can have bad days and you can recover quickly from them because now I know exactly what to do yeah. so if I have a bad weekend I know Monday morning I got to get right back on plan and I'm gonna be okay yeah. so I think that's a good message to people because you know we even have this thing called diet bet going on with the morning blend viewers and a lot of people are playing and it's like if you're not on track to where you want your goal to be sometimes you kind of throw your hands up and you give up and say well I'm not going to get there anyway I had a bad weekend I'm two pounds yeah. three pounds five pounds ten pounds back up on the scale so it's it's that persistence you're saying yeah. it's that commitment to consistency right it's not perfection it's yeah. persistence that's for sure and definitely you just want to and that's the beauty of it is that you don't have to wait till Monday morning you can Mm -hmm. just start you can start the next meal if you had pizza for lunch have a salad at dinner you don't have to wait till the next day you don't mm -hmm. it's the next minute you can just do better than you did I mean we're human we're all gonna make mistakes we're not gonna be perfect all the time that's uh, it's just incredible congratulations mm -hmm. to yeah, you. what you. does weight loss in your opinion <laughs> and fitness physical fitness have to do with financial fitness well, you know when we sit down with our clients we talk about what their goals and what their dreams are and my joy in life is helping people reach their financial um, dreams. But what often happens is when they get to that point of retirement, they wanted to play with their children, their grandchildren, they want to travel, mm -hmm. they want to do sports, and their bodies aren't able to do it. And so we can help our clients look at the cost of living, we can help them look at taxes and, and the volatility in the market, but we really can't help them with their health. Mm -hmm. We can't help them want to be healthy or be healthy. And so very very often well, I'll have a client who they get right into retirement and there's a stroke or there's a heart attack or they got bad knees mm -hmm. and they'll say I've always wanted to take this trip but I can't do it it's it, it calls for too much exercise and so what we really want to do is we want to encourage our clients to want to be healthy and so when I had the opportunity to get to know Cassie and meet Cassie I thought she did it and I asked her I said you know how do you feel and she said I can do anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can do anything. And that's what we want. We want to have a flexible life that we can make choices. But when your health is impaired, you've lost a huge choice. Mm -hmm. And so the whole idea is to, Cassie's going to be meeting with our clients where we, our Ellen Becker Investment Group has taken on the challenge to be healthy and to really show and to be a mentor and let people see what we've done but Cassie's really done the biggest I mean she got me so motivated mm -hmm. and it you was, met through golf right? and we met mm -hmm. through golf her husband is my golf instructor yeah. <laughs> and if you remember wasn't it your husband on the show who yes. had to wear the amount of weight that you yes. were carrying I while had, you were golfing the, I had oh, to you wear, had to wear I the had weight to wear the amount wear. that I lost yes. 115 pounds at that point plus I had to carry his golf bag yes which was about another 25 to 30 pounds well he wore so, nothing and had to yes. make each putt or burn Yes. or you know whatnot and a certain amount and if he didn't make it she couldn't take anything off yep. that's 
unbelievable. Mm -hmm. What was it like to carry that weight around? It was, it was, I mean, it hurt. It, I had, I took pictures, I had dig marks in me. I actually had three ribs out of place in my back <gasps> when I was all done. Um, it was, it hurt so bad, but it was also so empowering because at the, it was at that moment I realized exactly how strong I really was yeah. and what I could endure and what I could actually do and what I could accomplish in life if I set my mind to it. And yeah. so many people I've talked to because that was one of the most powerful portions for me yeah. because I started to think about and what weight am I carrying on my back right mm -hmm. yep. and how Whether do I how do physical, right yeah, mental. and I think we all have something and so it really made me aware Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was fabulous. Yeah, I tell everyone that people are not overweight because you like pizza and cheeseburgers. <laughs> people are overweight because you're filling a void or yeah. you're suppressing your feelings. And until you can actually, to me, it, the number one thing is the mental side and then it's nutrition and then it's exercise. Mm -hmm. Until you can actually get to the root of the problem and figure out why you're overweight in the first place, you'll never be able to keep it off. You'll be able to lose the weight, but you'll never be able to keep it off because you're going to keep going back to those things. So you need to really find tools to be able to deal with that. And that's why getting that support system is so important, whether it's your friends and family or you reach out to professional people like I did. Yeah, so we're gonna um, meet those professional people. We're also gonna talk more specifically about some of the nutrition, carb cycling, things like that. But right here, you're gonna meet Cassie's doctor and a fitness trainer who are gonna discuss what it takes to stay physically, emotionally, and financially fit when we come back. Hi guys. And welcome back, everybody. We are back with Kieran Ellenbecker, Cassie Kramer, and now joining us are John Pittenpole. Am I saying that right? Pittenpole. Pittenpole. <laughs> he is the owner and personal trainer at Revolution Fitness and Dr. Lori Gebhard. She is a clinical psychologist with the Mind, Body, Spirit program. And they're here to talk about the two components that you talked about, mm -hmm. um, the mind, get your mind right, and then the nutrition and, and fitness. So what, in your opinion, do people need to do to get their mind right if they're going to be in a position to lose the weight that they want to lose? Well, there are a number of different factors that go into it. One is kind of assessing why you're overeating, why you're choosing what you're eating, and some history that goes back to that. And then I use a number of different kinds of psychological interventions to help clear out old beliefs that are blocking people from being able to take progress going forward mm -hmm. okay. and reach their goal. I remember uh, just a couple of years ago um, when I had moved here, I had gained a, a lot of weight and I, one of my friends who was kind of working in nutrition and health, she said to me, she goes, I think you're eating your mother. You miss your mom and you're eating all these foods that remind <laughs> you of her. And I assume you probably hear a lot of people who've gone through, um, whether it's separation, whether it's death, whether it's... Um, you know, different things like that where you find out what you're filling, like you kind of said, right. is some sort of emotional void. That's right. That's is, right. Is that real common? It, it's very common, and it is exactly like Cassie said, that mm -hmm. you're filling some sort of emotional void. And once you can identify that and, again, use different interventions to process through that, you've cleared that out, and there's no longer a need to replace it with food. Mm -hmm. And I think there's steps that happen very quickly. So I met with Lori yesterday, and she did a meditation with me on eating, and when and it was about only eating what you need, and so every bite you take, you say, am I full? And then you put the fork down, and if you're not full, you take that bite, but if you are full, you know to stop. And so last night, I was telling her, I made four chicken drumsticks, <laughs> and I ate two, and then I went and I said, am I still hungry? And I was able to not eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was just by, she gave me a little tool mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. think about, and it really mm -hmm. changed it for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are little things, I think, that can make a difference. Yes. And John, yes. in your opinion, from an, an exercise nutrition standpoint, what do you see to being the key with people like Cassie who are actually able to lose and maintain a weight loss versus those who can't? Well, it's really coming down to creating a plan that works best for that individual. Um, we talked before about uh, people always come to me with, I had this diet. And my first question is, okay, what are you going to do when you're done? <laughs> because they, they think of things in short term versus long term. Mm -hmm. So the key is to come up with a plan that it's just what you do now. It's not until I lose my weight. It's not for 90 days. It's not for 180 days. This is just what I do now. So you lose the weight, and if you continue to do those things, you're going to keep it off. 
You can't, you can't plan short-term things that this is how I'm going to lose my weight and then go back to doing things you did before. It's got to be a complete change. Mm -hmm. And how can making some of those changes help people who are close to retirement even? Like, you know, like Karen had said, making those physical fitness changes now or even later in life help them when they're looking at retirement. Well, it's never too late to make those changes um, because anytime you make those changes, you're going to extend your life. You know, when you can lose weight and you become healthier, you're going to extend your life. Um, I think there's a huge um, association between mobility and mortality. When people lose their mobility, they, they, their mortality rate increases. You got to be able to move. Uh, you got to be able to have fun, like Karen said. Uh, you know, she and I talked about what good is all this money you saved if you can't enjoy it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it's never too late, uh, even if you're 80. Mm -hmm. You know, lose 10 pounds, you're going to be able to move better, play with your grandkids. Yeah, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. You talk about the importance of nutrition. We've heard on the show before, it's like 80% what you eat and 20% mm -hmm. exercise. I don't know if that ratio is, is yes. right exactly, but um, you believe strongly in the nutrition component of it yes. and something called carb cycling, which I've never heard of before. Yeah, I actually do carb cycling and I still follow carb cycling today for maintenance. Um, I actually follow Chris Powell's Choose More, Lose More for Life plan. Mm -hmm. And so basically you're eating five times a day within 30 minutes of waking up and every three hours after that. So you're basically feeding your furnace. So you're keeping your metabolism at running at its highest rate and you're keeping your blood sugar more steady. Because the problem is, is most people wait so long in between eating that you're having the up and down spikes of your blood sugar, so you're causing the insulin or you're doing all these things to your body instead of taking full advantage, because your body is a machine. And when you feed it right and you exercise, I mean, it, it goes crazy. And that's how you can lose so much weight in such a short amount of time. Mm. And so some days you eat high carb days, some days you eat low carb days, especially for women. Women, you always want to eat low carb because everyone says that's the best way to lose weight. Um, but women, especially over the age of 40, needs car need carbs for mood stabilization. And on high carb days, you're burning at a high metabolism. And on low carb days, you're burning fat. So the two work together to give you maximum potential for yourself. What kind of carbs do you eat? Um, like healthy carbs. I eat a lot of quinoa. Quinoa is a power food because not only is it a carb, but it also is a protein. I eat white potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, brown rice, a lot of whole grains, Ezekiel yeah. bread. Um, not You don't get the carbs. And also fruit is a huge carb. Yeah. So, But I do try to limit myself to one piece of fruit a day. You can have more, but because it does have more natural sugar in it, it does tend to increase your blood sugar a little bit higher but um, yeah those are the types of carbs I eat not I don't eat cakes and ice creams pasta? anymore for my uh, you can have, <laughs> you can have some pasta. <laughs> But it's whole yeah. wheat pasta, and it's a cup of pasta instead of a mound of pasta. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I totally get I don't that. Right. Understand. And so yeah. I will mix it with, <laughs> what I'll do is I'll mix it with spaghetti squash. So spaghetti ah. squash makes you feel like you're eating spaghetti, and you can have your cup of spaghetti in there, and now you have visually that mound of food. Mm -hmm. Where before I used to eat very um, low-volume, high-calorie food, McDonald's, yeah. um, all those things. Now I eat high-volume, low-calorie. So in the beginning, it was actually hard to eat all the food I was supposed to eat, and I was I was getting a lot less calories. I was eating like 900 calories, and mm. I was in a day, and I was full. Um, yeah. But it was just because it was such high volume, and my metabolism was so slow. So it was taking so long for my body to break down those foods. But now every two and a half hours, my stomach's growling. Three o'clock, three hours, and I'm <laughs> ravished in Hungary and it's just because my metabolism is running so high which helps keep the weight off so yeah. it's a win-win. I think yeah. a lot of people think that they can't change the metabolism. No, you that can. they're born with it. Yeah. They're stuck with it because you hear yeah. people say, "I have such a low metabolism." Right. You know, most people actually have a higher metabolism than they than they mm -hmm. <laughs> believe. And even in the beginning, with the changing things around, I was pre-diabetic, um, and after my first 90 days, I no longer was. And mm -hmm. when I started, my resting heart rate was 108, and my cheeks were always red. And I actually thought I had rosacea um, because my cheeks were always red. And I found out that it was just that my you know my resting heart rate my heart, my heart was working so hard and now my resting heart rate's a 52 which That's is like amazing yeah, wow. elite yeah. athletes yep. 52 yeah. so well, here's the information because i think it's a wonderful point yeah. about fitness and how fitness retirement. plays a role in retirement as well as your money sense so if you need help planning your financial mm -hmm. future or if you don't feel comfortable with your current financial advisor you've got to call ellen becker investment group they will take the time you need to feel comfortable the phone number is 888 642 
7526. You can visit them at their new office in the village of Whitefish Bay. Their website is ellenbecker.com. You guys great are great. See you. Thanks so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Great to have you.